Hello and welcome to this video. In this video we're going to do something a little bit different and we're going to actually sit down and talk about the myths around taxes and some of those statements, some of those questions, some of those things I've had clients ask me or I've overheard into the small businesses community that are just plainly false and I want to go through some of those myths now and talk about them in detail so that you don't make the same mistake. Stay tuned. I told him I can be a fighter if you want I'll be there to catch you if you fall I can make it brighter when it's dark When it's dark I told him I would do it all for you And I know you do it for me Hello, my name's Owen Patrick I'm a Chartered Accountant Certified UK Trainer by Intuit And also that QuickBooks chat but also it's my duty as an accountant to try and spot when potential clients or friends, family or colleagues or whoever it's gonna be are making mistakes or making the wrong assumption about things. And that's what this video is all about. It's about looking at those myths, dissecting them and trying to make sure that we come away knowing the truth. And for the most part, these things are being told and being shared around for the best intentions. They're trying to make sure that when one business owner talks to another business owner, that they're trying to share maybe what they've overheard or what they've come to expect or what they feel is right for given their business circumstances. But every business is different and there's always some times where you've got to just make sure that you've got the right interpretation. So let's dive into one of the more common ones that I come across on a regular basis and let's try and see if we can dissect it. What I pay myself is what I'm taxed on. Now this comes up quite regular and it's one of those things where as a business owner your whole purpose of running a business is at some point to remunerate yourself for the work that you've done. There's very few businesses in the world where, especially if it's a one-man band, if you're going to go out there with the intention of not making some money. Even if it's part-time or full-time, you're still going to want to think about how much you're going to remunerate yourself. Well hello everybody future editing Aaron here. From this point on, you'll notice that at some points the audio becomes really, really terrible and I can only apologize for that. I know what the problem is and I know I will not be making that mistake again, so bear with me. I did try re-recording the whole section, but I just didn't, couldn't get it right how I wanted it. So I've gone back to the original format and hopefully you can just bear with me for this next section that can be a little bit scratchy from time. I'll make sure I do better going forward. Also, fun fact, a little embarrassing as I'm an accountant myself, but it turns out that I actually miscounted the five myths that I'm about to disclose. Uh, for some reason, myth number three completely disappears. Sorry about that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stick on the end a bonus third and missing myth for all you interested. So if you want some bonus content, stay till the end. You're still going to want to think about how much you're going to remunerate yourself. But the question of how much am I going to get taxed on that remuneration depends. And it all depends on what type of business structure you have. Are you running as a sole trader business or are you running as a limited company? Let's do the easy one first, sole trader. And the simplest thing to think about sole trader is how are you taxed as a sole trader? Well, it all comes down to you completing a tax return. Now that tax return covers a tax year. Most businesses out there are gonna opt for a 1st of April to 31st of March tax year. Makes it nice and easy. If you've opted for that tax year, then as soon as you finish one tax year and start another, so effectively end of March or technically 5th of April, then at that point you finish the tax year and therefore you need to compile a tax return. That tax return is due 31st of January. But what do you put on that tax return? Well, as a sole trader, you're going to put on that tax return every penny you've earned in that period. So everything you've bought and sold as that business, all the income, all the expenses is going to give you a profit. And it's that profit that you're going to pay taxes on. So if it's a profit that you pay taxes on, what happens to what you physically pay yourself? In truth, absolutely nothing. The amount you pay yourself as a sole trader has no part in that calculation. Remember the calculation, how much you've sold, how much you've bought and the profit that you've made. Not at one point does that mention about how much you've taken. So as a sole trader, if your profit is say 50,000 pound and you take one pound, then the tax you pay will be exactly the same as if your profit was 50,000 pound but you took 50,000 pound. 
they'll be exactly the same. As a sole trader, your tax is based on what you earn, not how much you take out. So the phrase, how much I pay myself as a sole trader, is completely irrelevant. The only time you need to figure out what that means for your business is for your cash flow. And you want to be making sure you've got enough cash flow to be able to keep that business going. So when you think about how much you're going to pay yourself, just make sure you've considered cash flow. Don't worry one bit about how much is that going to be in tax because the tax figure won't have anything to do with it. Now, I did say it depends. And I did say if you're a limited company, that it's a different story. And that's because as a limited company, you are potentially taxed on the money you take out of a business. Remember, a limited company is a completely separate legal entity. It's doing its own thing. It's buying stuff, it's selling stuff, it's making a profit. And it's paying taxes on that profit. But if you, as the business owner, take money out of the business, then at that point, there could easily be a tax bill. Now, the tax bill is pretty generous in terms of the overall taxes you could suffer. What typically would happen is you would take £8,000 of that as salary, and then you can top up the rest of that up to £15,000 as what's called dividends. And what that really means, if and rough figures here, you really get your first £15,000 out of a business completely tax-free. And then every time you take money out of that, there's a potential for some tax on top. And that tax will be taxed at what's called dividend tax rates, 7.5%, and that will go on your next personal tax return. So as a limited company, you do have to think about taxes and how much you pay yourself. It's quite a critical part of running a limited company. As a sole trader, no consideration whatsoever other than cash flow forecast. Hopefully that clears things up. Myth number two. If I reinvest every penny I earn, my tax bill will be nil. It's a tricky one. What you have to remember is HMRC's rules and regulations around income and expenditure is that you should only be applying expenditure to income that's arisen in a particular tax year. Let me try and break that down. If I buy an item and I sell the item in that tax year, this method is called accrual accounting. And HMRC do have a provision for what's called cash-based accounting. If you're only a small business, you do have the provision of using cash base. If you are using cash base, then you can ignore this completely. But be aware that's only for small businesses and there are thresholds where you have to actually start accounting for your taxes and for your tax return and for your accounts on an accrual basis. What accrual basis means is that your income, your expenses should always match income. So the idea there is if you bought an item and sold it within the tax year, you're more than able to claim for that item. But on the other hand, if you actually bought an item, but you didn't sell it till the next tax year, then technically you have to carry that item forward in terms of what's called stock. You carry it forward for one tax year and put it into another. Therefore, if you're on a cruel basis, then it doesn't matter if you reinvest every penny, because if you don't sell the item, you're still going to have to pay a tax bill because of the items that you've reinvested but not yet sold. So just be careful of that one. I know of people who have fallen foul of that, coming to the end of a tax year, plowed a load of money into stock, for example, and then hadn't realized that that was gonna happen in terms of they were gonna then convert that stock and carry that stock forward and had a tax bill anyway. Myth number three, being that registered is just plain bad. VAT is unfortunately something that you have to adhere to if you turn over more than £85,000 in a single 365 days. And that £85,000 is across all your platforms. So it doesn't matter what you're selling, what services you're doing, you add them all together. If they're over £85,000, you must be VAT registered. Now, a lot of people are scared of VAT, and I get it. I understand it. It's an extra tax to worry about. But the principle of VAT is that as a VAT registered business, you shouldn't be affected. It should be what's classed as tax neutral. And in an ideal world, you would sell your services or your goods for say hundred pound and you'd add 20% on top. So you, you will actually sell those services for 120. And the idea is as well, if you've incurred any VAT to get to that sale, 
So if you've had to endure VAT onto that, say you've had to buy something for £60 to be able to get that £120 sale, then you're allowed to take one from the other and you only pay over £10 even though you've collected 20 Because the thing to remember about VAT is you're collecting the VAT on behalf of the government. And the people who should be suffering the VAT should be your end customer, whoever that is. When you and me walk into the shops and we buy stuff from Asda or Tesco or wherever we're buying it from, that's when VAT should hit us. When we buy a telephone bill, that's when VAT should hit us. Basically, us as the general public, it's us that should be suffering the VAT. As a business, in reality, you shouldn't. There's also certain circumstances where as a business, you can sell at 0% and then you'll be able to claim loads of VAT back. So for some businesses, it's actually really beneficial to become VAT registered from the outset because what they'll do is every month or quarter, whatever they want to file their VAT return, they actually get money back from the government. If you're just starting up a business and you've got loads of expenses to lay out at the beginning and you have no sales coming in, again, makes sense to be VAT registered in that case to claim the VAT back on the expenses you're, you're incurring. VAT itself sometimes can be a force for good. And as a business, it's one of those things where you've just got to accept it. After the £85,000 mark, you're going to have to be VAT registered. Ideally, you want to be smashing that 85,000 mark so that the VAT doesn't affect you as much. And ultimately, HMRC have schemes in place, the flat rate scheme, the margin scheme, there's partial exemption scheme, there's massive amounts of schemes out there to try and make sure that whatever business it is that you're doing, however you're running your business, you won't or you shouldn't be adversely affected by VAT. So VAT is isn't always the terrible tax that everyone can think of it. It's an administration burden, granted, but not always is it a terrible tax. Number four. Are we on four? I think we're on four. Let's go with four. Number four. MTD is a myth and we shouldn't have to worry about it. No, no, absolutely not. MTD, unfortunately, is something that is a reality. What is MTD? MTD stands for Making Tax Digital. What's Making Tax Digital? Well, it's basically HMRC saying that going forward, they want your taxable details to be digital. At the moment, Making Tax Digital is all about if you're VAT registered. So as I mentioned in that last bit about being VAT registered, well, if you're VAT registered, you have to be MTD compliant. And what that means in a nutshell is that it means that you as a business have to submit your returns electronically using a piece of software. But that's not the end of it. MTD for VAT was only the start. MTD for self-employed is the next step and that's where it gets really, really scary. Because unfortunately, it's not a myth. Unfortunately, it's something that we're all going to have to accept. And what we're going to have to accept is, at this moment in time, we can record our business expenditure and income exactly how we want. Back of a fad packet, Excel, a book, whatever you want to do, you have the choice of doing that. And unfortunately, that's all about to change. And we only have around about two years or so until we're going to feel the effects of the change. And what that change will mean is that you will have to file your tax return via some form of software, something like QuickBooks. And what it probably will mean as well, it's not been 100% confirmed, but it seems like it's going to go through, is we'll move to quarterly submissions as opposed to annual. The idea then is that you're submitting that information on a more regular basis. You're telling HMRC more regularly what's going on. We all assume they'll be able to tax you more often. It's something that isn't going away. It's something that we need to be prepared for as businesses going forward. And it's something we can't afford to bury our head in the sand. So my advice, start looking at digitizing your system now. QuickBooks is the way forward, in my opinion. And as you know, down below, there's all links to be able to get yourself a discounted version of QuickBooks if you need it. And myth number five, zero is better than QuickBooks Online. Pfft, whatever. And there we have it. Some of the myths that you've been hearing about, about tax and accountancy or been debunked. Okay, so I did say there was a bonus content, a bonus third myth that I completely forgot about. And that myth's very, very simple. If I earn under £12,000, I don't need to do a tax return. Uh -uh. 
Or other people say, if I earn under £1,000, I don't need to do a tax return. Unfortunately not. Unfortunately, when it comes to tax returns, it's all about do you have income that's not being taxed at source? Let's think about it. If you have a salary, then you're going to get taxed at source. You only get paid the net amount. But if you have a business, HMRC, for example, then how do they know how much you've been taxed? Well, that's your problem. So if you have any form of income that's outside of PAYE, then you're probably going to be in a position where you need to be telling HMRC. Now, you telling HMRC will mean they get to make a choice. More than likely, they'll want you to complete a tax return. But that whole £1,000 of extra income, and if it's over £1,000, I declare it, and £1,000, I don't, and all that sort of stuff, well, you can make that decision while you're doing your tax return. If you've already told HMRC you're earning outside of PAYE, then you'll be asked to do a tax return. When you do a tax return, you can then decide, well, is it below a thousand pound or is it above a thousand pound? If it's above a thousand pound, you include it on your tax return. If it's below a thousand pound, you don't include it on your tax return. Really simple. But you're in a much better position if you make that decision then, as opposed to make the decision later and go, actually, I was over a thousand pound. I should have done a tax return. Because at that point, it could be too late. At that point, you may find yourself having yourself more issues. So, Bonus myth number three, and making it five myths using the ability to count one, two, three, four, and five. Bonus myth number five if you earn anything outside of PYE, if you have any form of income with the intention, intention to trade, my advice is to at least tell HMRC they will ask you to do a tax return. Either you complete that tax return with the income because it's about over a thousand pound, or because it's below a thousand pound, you just include it with your other income, so PYE, etc. etc. Promise you you'll be in a much better position if you try that one. Cheers. So there you have it, all the myths that I could think of and I've been asked in the past couple of days all been debunked. But did I miss any? Is there anything else that you've overheard on the grapevine and you would like to be answered? Well, that's why the comment section is all about you. So go out there, put some comments in there, and I'll do a round two of the myth buster idea. Also, if you liked any of the content we've done today, don't forget to like, subscribe, all that jazz. Help the channel out immensely. And next time you get someone doing this, I will tell you straight away, it's all about when you pay yourself is how much tax you have to pay. I think. Potentially. Maybe. Or this. MTD is just a myth. I don't really know what MTD is. I'm sure it's a myth. Then you know, categorically, where you stand. My name's been Aaron Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, everything else, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I told him I can be a fighter if you want. I'll be there to catch you if you fall. I can make it brighter when it starts. I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's really new Even if we're staying bad My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him na, 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 na My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah Yeah, yeah, yeah Hello and thank you for watching that video. What you may not know is this channel that you've watched this video from is part of a wider group. That wider group is called Apple Core Production. And the three channels that we have involved are as follows. Aaron Patrick, the QuickBooks Chat. Boffix Tax Tip. Finally, we have Apple Core Live and Geeky. All the links and everything are down below in the description. But it really mean a lot to us if you can go and give a like to the other channels as well.